What gear do pro sports photographers use? I'm Daniel Mogg and I've covered over 100 NFL games, the 2016 Olympics and the Stanley Cup Finals and numerous professional sporting events across the globe. And today I'm gonna to share with you the most common sports photography gear I see professionals use on the sidelines. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Daniel Mogg, a filmmaker and photographer based out of Seattle, Washington. As I mentioned, I've covered numerous sporting events across the world, and today I want to share with you the most common sports photography gear I see used amongst professionals on the sidelines. Before we dive deeper into this pro sports photography gear conversation, I do want to preface that for my entire career, I've really only shot ever on Canon. What I can tell you is just based on my experience shooting with Canon, but I really want to keep this a generic conversation, not really dive too deep into the nuts and bolts of each different cameras and their brands, but really just speak general as a whole rule of thumb of what you really need to get the best sports photography shots in a professional setting. Can we talk about this beautiful Seattle fall weather real quick? It has not rained once. It's just been the perfect kickstart to fall. And with that, I'm rocking my Cuts long sleeve gear. It's been, just been perfect for, I can wear it as a standalone during the day while it's still hot, but at, at night I can just throw on a quick jacket and I'm still kept warm. So make sure you check out Cuts long sleeve, all their long sleeve gear this fall at the link below. So let's dive into this pro sports photography gear conversation. The very first thing I noticed that most professional sports photographers use is a blazing fast camera when it comes both to autofocus and frames per second, or FPS is the term I'll be using for this video. They're typically the fastest cameras on the market, which is the Canon 1DX Mark III. Even twos are still pretty prominent. The R3, the brand new R3, Sony Z9, Sony A9, these are all different combinations of cameras I've seen on the sideline. And as I mentioned, it's because they are blazing fast when it comes to the frames per second and the autofocus. And that really is the point that I want to focus on is that you really need a fast FPS camera to make it in a professional sports photography setting. So if you have the budget, I would recommend going with one of the top notch cameras that I mentioned. You can't ever go wrong with speed in professional sports photography. These athletes are paid an incredible amount of money for a reason. They are hard to keep up with on the field. And so having a camera that is able to do that will really enhance and make sure you do not miss an incredible moment. Now, if you're looking to go on a budget, probably the 5D Mark IV would be my recommendation. You can get a used one on KEH for around 1500 bucks, but honestly, I wouldn't skimp on the body, as I mentioned, because you need as many frames as possible to get that sweet action. The second topic I want to talk about is focal length and lenses. The 70 to 200 is the absolute staple of a pro sports photographer's kit. Now, generally, most are probably shooting with that nice, sweet F2.8, but if you're really looking to save on some money, definitely get the 7200, but you could probably get by with an F4. They'll have a little bit better IS, some of the brands, and also you know, if you're just starting, you might just be shooting outside and not just purely on night games. But if I could really, if I could only choose one lens to shoot a sports photography event with, it would be the 7200. So that is an absolute investment you need to make. But when it comes to the pros, they all typically have a 400 millimeter, 600 millimeter, sometimes even up to 800 millimeter, super long focal length lenses. And these are also critical for really setting your shots apart. It'll get you that extra reach, even if you throw a 1.4 extender on there. I've seen that as well. But that extra reach will really enhance your shots and make you stand out from the others. I've shot a handful of games on the Canon 200 to 400 with the extender. That lens is absolutely incredible. And all of these lenses really are, but they are pricey as you know. So one workaway that I've done around it, so say it's a big Sunday night primetime game or, you know, a playoff game, I've rented those lenses in the past. So maybe not every game your portfolio has those lenses with those types of pictures, but for the big games, big moments, I've had no problem going and renting for a couple hundred bucks over the weekend. So when it comes to have my portfolio, you really have a nice set from those big time moments. And to wrap up the last few pieces of gear that you need to be a pro sports photographer, another essential is a monopod, a very sturdy monopod. When you're using those big focal length lenses, you know, 400, 600 millimeter lenses, they get quite heavy as you're carrying them around all day. And you really need something, one, 
to stabilize your shot, having the ground while you're holding this huge lens, but also something you can throw on your shoulder while you're running up and down the sidelines. But I would recommend getting a nice sturdy aluminum one because there's nothing worse than putting a very expensive lens on a not so great monopod that either breaks or collapses or something and then you have to pay to repair your very expensive lens. Most pro sports photographers also have multiple camera bodies. The most common setup I see is, you know, you have your 400, your long lens on a monopod as your main camera and then you've got probably a 70 to 200 with a strap around your hip that you can pull to the side, pull up quickly to your eye and use and then some sort of maybe smaller camera that just hangs around your neck. Um, so typically that's a pretty typical common setup with, with the three camera bodies that might be stretching it for some people. Um, even two is just helpful. So for instance, football wise, you know, you could have your long lens covering the action that's going at the line of scrimmage. And then the play happens, say we're in the end zone, a 7200 is really great for end zone action based on where you're positioned. So you throw that to the side, whip it up real quick, grab that shot, and then say the player comes towards you to celebrate, drop that down. You have it around your neck. You have your wide angle, typically like a 16 to 35, and then you're up getting the action. So you can really cover a full sequence uh, of action that happens. This again will also you know, separate you in your shots, being able to cover all three versus just getting one long shot that happens down the line. And for me, I'm okay if these second camera bodies maybe aren't the best and most robust cameras. You know, that 5D Mark IV that shoots seven FPS could be on your hip or around your neck. The Canon M6 Mark II, which with, I'm shooting on here. I've shot an NFL game on that before. You can see the results in this YouTube video right here. I'm okay with me you know, having that smaller camera around my neck to just throw up real quickly for some secondary shots. And bonus gear I wanna talk about real quick is your game day fit. As I mentioned at the top of the video, cuts, which I'm rocking here with the shirt and the hats. You know, covering games, you're, you're working outside, you know, eight to 10 hours, full days in the same clothes. And I always wanna make sure that I'm comfortable as possible. And so I've been rocking and wearing cut shirts the last few years. They're, you know, incredibly comfy for, you know, all day wear, but they also, in my opinion, they look very professional clean and you know they're just dropping some new long sleeve wear as i mentioned here for fall it's starting to get cold out there covering different games so having you know a comfortable long sleeve shirt is just a staple in my opinion so make sure you hit that link below to check out the cuts gear so who are these pro sports photographers i'd like to think of myself as one so thank you guys so much for watching but there's so many talented folks in this industry, I wanna just throw out a couple. Rod Marr, who is my guy, he's the Seattle Seahawks photographer. He is an absolute legend, Nikon shooter. Make sure you follow him. Ben Liebenberg, who is the you know head of photo at the NFL. His stuff is amazing. He shoots on, on Leica, um, but also you know covers a lot of game. Ryan Krang, that whole NFL focus group is amazing. Also, my Florida guy, Logan Bowles based out of, out of Jacksonville. All those guys just do tremendous NFL photo work. So make sure you check them out on Instagram because their stuff is just amazing. And I can confirm from shooting with them, majority of the stuff that I've talked about in this video, they're using as professional sports photographers on the sidelines. So that's it for today's video. I was just thinking about it. You know, I get a lot of different questions on what kind of gear you need. In my opinion, these are all things that you need to perform your best as a professional sports photographer. I know obviously it can be a little cost prohibitive, but the investment you make upfront will really show in your pictures. And as I mentioned, you know, try some of the few workarounds that, that I've done to really enhance my portfolio. And if you have any questions, hit the comments below, um, stay subscribed. I'm going to try to answer and, and do more content around these type of situations and scenarios for you. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button if this has been helpful for you and I'll see you guys next time.